Welcome to Just Asia, AHRC TV's weekly human rights program. These are the headlines. Ganga Maya's health deteriorating in Nepal. Thai prosecution indicts activists for campaigning against constitution. Indigenous farmers shot in Philippines for claiming ancestral land. Call for UN inquiry to lawyer killings in Balochistan. Indonesia has no law against torture. Urgent appeals from Thailand and Pakistan. Welcome to AHRC TV's Just Asia. I am Julia Roblando. This week, Just Asia begins with Nepal, where Ganga Maya Adhikari, an icon of justice, has resumed her hunger strike on August 11th. Ganga Maya had suspended her hunger strike after nearly a year when the Nepalese government committed to prosecute the culprits of her son's brutal murder. Eight months after the Supreme Court directed the government to take Chabilal Paudel, the main accused, into judicial custody, no further action has been taken. Krishna Prasad was brutally murdered by the Maoists at Chitwan in June 2004, while he was visiting his grandparents. His parents, Ganga Maya and Nanda Prasad, began a hunger strike asking for justice in 2013. Instead of justice, 22nd of September 2014 saw Nanda Prasad met with a painful death on the 334th day of his hunger strike, the first hunger strike death in Nepal. Nanda's body is still lying and waiting for justice at the teaching hospital's morgue in Maharaj Ganj. Ganga Maya has become an icon of justice for the victims of Nepal's conflict era. She has been fighting for justice for over a decade and her health is now deteriorating. The Asian Human Rights Commission urges the government of Nepal to provide justice to Ganga Maya and prevent yet another senseless death. Next, the Thai prosecution has indicted the case against five defendants, including three members of the New Democracy Movement. One student activist from Meijo University and a Prachatai reporter with a provincial court of Ratchaburi for exercising their freedom of expression and campaigning against the draft constitution. The public prosecutor has further asked the court to revoke the right to vote of the defendants for 10 years, in accordance with Section 61 of the Constitutional Referendum Act. In the Philippines, three indigenous farmers were killed by private security guards as they were occupying contested land in village in Bukidnon. Although one of the farmers, Remar Mayantao, raised his hand in surrender, he was still shot. A security guard then cut his throat with a knife. Farmer Senon Nakaituna attempted to run but slipped and fell. Another security guard turned him over and shot him in the chest. According to witnesses, the guards replaced a weeding bolo in Nakaituna's hand with a 38mm gun. Rajan Sumina was killed after being hit on the left cheek and forehead. Three other Lumad farmers, including a 15-year-old girl, were wounded. The three Lumad farmers from the Haiganon tribe were having coffee at 6 a.m. on July 12 when 13 security guards surrounded their makeshift tent and opened fire. Three tents were destroyed. The tents were set up on Lumand ancestral land, which is currently occupied by Ramkar Incorporated. The guards were hired by Ramon and Carmen Augustines, owner of Ramkar Incorporated. In 2011, the Higao non community in Lupiagan village processed an ancestral domain claim over 5,000 hectares of land. Part of the land claimed by the Lumads included land from Ramkar Incorporated, fenced to raise cattle in the area. On 11 June 2014, the Lumads set up tents on the contested land. On the next day, they were forced to go away by the guards and transfer their tents outside the fenced area. The security guards then put up a guardhouse in front of them. Next, the Pakistan government has failed to conduct any impartial probe into the killings of 93 persons, including 73 lawyers, and is instead blaming India or the Taliban. In fact, being a party to human rights violations, the government of Pakistan cannot have an impartial and transparent inquiry into the incident. 
The AHRC is therefore urging lawyers from around the world to come together in condemning the attack and demand a UN inquiry into the matter. On August 8th, a suicide attack killed an entire generation of lawyers to pave way for the smooth construction of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor through Balochistan. The corridor has been strongly resisted by the people of Balochistan as they fear they will lose all the benefits to the government and the military. It has been reported that out of $46 million budget, only $6 million will be invested in Balochistan, with the rest going to Punjab and Islamabad. Refusing to discuss the objections of the people, the military has been using all its might against the Balochi resistance, resulting in continuous and forced disappearances and extrajudicial killings. Moving to Indonesia, the country's penal code does not recognize torture as a crime, and there are no other laws on torture either. As a result, torture is becoming rampant. Torture is still used as a method to obtain confession from suspects or other accused persons. Although the police have issued internal regulations in human rights, there is no serious effort to reduce or eradicate torture. Over the last two years, the Asian Human Rights Commission has documented and reported 40 cases of torture, most occurring in police custody. On March 30th, for instance, Mr. Jupriento, who allegedly stole a motorcycle, was tortured during the police examination. In the case of Marianus Oki, who was arrested on 3 December 2015, he was tortured to death in the Banat Manas police station, East Nusa Tengera province. Not only is torture endemic, but it is largely unpunished. The few cases that make it to court result in light punishment. Four police officers were sentenced to three years' imprisonment earlier this year for torturing to death Mr. Suhar Lee, while the court judgment recognized that the victim's death was caused by torture, the judges were not brave enough to levy a heavier sentence to the four police officers. Torture remains a serious problem in Indonesia. It is needed serious effort from the government, in particular law enforcement agency, to avoid torture and punish torture in every circumstances. For instance, torture in the police custody, the chief of national police should ensure that internal police res regulation which prohibit torture must be implemented in every level of the police offices. The chief of national police along with national police commission as well as commission three of the house of, of representative should develop effective monitoring system to ensure prevention of torture and punishment against uh, practice of torture in whatsoever condition. The most important is the judges itself. In some cases, the judges ignore that the confession of the defendant or suspect obtained by torture. So the defendant told the judges that he or she was tortured during the police examination. The judges will not take into consideration due to lack of evidence. Therefore, the rule of legal aid or legal aid provider is very important to ensure that the defendant or suspect will not be tortured during examination processes. Uh, the government sh should show its seriousness to eradicate and stop torture. Therefore, enactment of the new bill of penal code and the bill on punishment against torture is a must to eradicate and punish torture in Indonesia. Finally, the Urgent Appeals Weekly features three cases from Thailand and Pakistan. In Thailand, Ms. Mushliha Masay and her husband, Mr. Ibrahim, were arrested and detained under martial law in southern Thailand. The couple, both authors, were arrested by a joint police and military force on August 12 at the Talo Kapoor beach. The authorities later conducted a search of their house and collected some items from there. At present, both are in custody at the Inca Youth Boraihan military camp in Patani province. Also in Thailand, 
Three young activists, one local land rights defender, and two human rights documentation officers from Thai Lawyers for Human Rights have been summoned for charges after organizing a constitution-related event in the northeast of Thailand. All six of them were accused of violating the head of the NCPO Order No. 3-2015 which bans a political gathering of five persons or more. On 31st July 2016, student activists organized a public discussion called Talk for Freedom on the Draft Constitution. Prior to the August 7th Constitutional Referendum Day at Khon Ken University, Northeastern Thailand, Despite many attempts to stop the event by authorities, including threats of filing legal actions against the organizers, the activists continued holding the discussion. In Pakistan, Tanvir Ahmed, a Kashmiri freelance journalist and researcher on public policy, is missing since his arbitrary arrest on August 15. He was last seen in Pakistani Kashmir when persons claiming to be ISI agents picked him up. Ahmed has been critical about the selection process of eight reserve seats in the Azad Jammu Kashmir Assembly, though he is a friend to the newly elected Prime Minister of AJK. His criticism of the selection process has been resulted in vindictive government action. That is all for this episode of Just Asia. For more on these and other issues, please visit www.humanrights.asia or www.alrc.asia forward slash just Asia. Thank you for watching and see you next week.